So for another test, I'm about to go and do a marathon in the Socony Endorphin Elite, solo marathon around the streets of London. I might hit a running track for a bit, uh, but I'm gonna go and see how these shoes hold up. I'm gonna try and do marathon pace. I would like to actually go and run and see if I can do a fast time overall in a marathon, but I think the stop start nature is gonna make it difficult, but we will see what these shoes are made of over the distance that they're really designed to run. So let's go find out. So I'm three miles into this marathon test, buzzing along the streets of London, just come across Amherst Fridge, now heading down towards a track that I'm gonna run somewhere. And yeah, I mean the first three miles, these shoes, as with the 5Ks, they are bouncy, much bouncier than the Pro 3, I think. And what, I, what my initial sense here is from these early miles of kind of marathon pace, it's just about the overall kind of wider base but I think you get in the mid to forefoot that it's something like the Adios Pro 3 or even the Adios Prime X Strung. Uh, so I just think it's you a little bit more of a wider, more stable platform compared to other kind of super shoes like this, or at least some of them, even maybe the Alpha Fly. Now, later on, I will do side by side miles in all of those shoes for our head to heads to find out if that's really true. But that's my initial feeling here, my instinct in these early miles is there's just there is a nice springy platform to move off but it's a bit wider so there is wobble underfoot so you know super shoe stability really here and you know, you're going to get wobble on that kind of big foam but maybe there's just a bit more of a landing zone so and that might improve it for some people who want a little bit more uh, width in the base of the super foam to use as that cushion but it's definitely spring in these, they're definitely fast, there's definitely propulsion. So what's interesting here, we're about ten, coming up to nine and a half miles in, in these elites. And on the last few laps, I've just had pain under the toes, like the middle toes. Not a big toe, my little toe, the toes, the three of them in the middle. That's a pain that I've never had before running ever. And it feels like it's related to the shoes and the way that foam is hitting the ground under there. Now it might be the fact that I'm on a track. Obviously you're gonna get that spring back from this track. And maybe that's not a great issue for the road, but yeah, that's not a pleasant sensation. That's made me a little bit worried that I'm not gonna make the distance. So that's the half marathon in 1.30. I've done sort of, what now, nine miles on the track, got seven more before I go back to the road. And I have to say, when you're, these shoes have been comfortable throughout most of those miles, apart from that toe issue, which has eased off a little bit, but happens every now and again if I'm, if I'm landing too much up on my toes, it becomes a problem again. But the platform for these has been fantastic. And I do feel like they've given me more energy than maybe I, necessarily having my training for this kind of run but we'll see now this is where the meat and drink starts it's a big test for the shoes do they give me extra when the fatigue really starts to bite so coming up to the last lap on the track then 20 miles i've done like 15 and a half on the track gonna go off and do six home on the road 
These elites have held up pretty well on the track, actually. That feeling that when it's under my toes has sort of gone away mainly. There's plenty of spring. I mean, my legs are tired now and the shoes are not gonna make up for the fact that I'm a bit busted from doing lots of laps of a 400 meter track. But comfort wise, pretty much all good. The uppers are super comfortable. These are quite a disappearing kind of super shoe. You know, some of the super shoes, I feel like then they, you know, you can be very, very aware that you're wearing them and you're thinking about how and when to engage the foot. And out here running around this in loops, you know, obviously I'm running on an even surface on the track, but I feel like you haven't had to worry as much as in some other shoes. So that's been really good. Got to say that I'm very, very glad to be getting off this track now and finishing up on the roads though. So let's get it done. So that is the marathon test done. 26.2 in the Soccer Endorphin Elite. And uh, safe to say, I'm pretty broken. I need food and fuel and water. And yeah, I mean, towards the end, I definitely sort of didn't feel quite the protection, but I'm tired, I'm on tired legs. It's quite hard to judge towards the end of that. Uh, and there's cushioning for sure on these shoes. I did feel the ground coming up a little bit and just under the back of the toes, yeah, that sensation that came on the track sort of returned a bit and there's definitely a bit of foot fatigue there. Now, I don't know whether that's just me running today or whether that's the positioning of the plate and how the foam works. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see if anyone else finds that. It might just be that I'm tired, you know, but that's something that towards in those last sort of six miles definitely felt a little bit more and had to sort of, I couldn't really find that kind of mid foot to four foot placement without there being a little bit of discomfort underfoot. Did they help me towards the end? Yeah, there's still plenty of spring in these towards the end for sure. And I think on fitter legs, a bit more kind of marathon ready, I think these are gonna carry you in terms of the propulsion and the energy that you're getting back through a marathon quite nicely. As I said, that platform that there is to run on, I think is up there for me with some of the best super shoes that I've tested. Uh, I'm gonna save my judgment on whether or not I put them up there with the others like the Strung, the Pro 3, or the Alpha Fly when I do a little bit of side by side, because it's been a little while since I ran in those ones. I want to do give myself a little reminder of what they feel like on the feet. But if there was only one pair of shoes that existed and you said go and run a marathon in them, these would do a job for sure. I think a lot of people are going to like these shoes. I think I prefer them to the Pro, the Endorphin Pro for sure. There's more energy in them. But um, yeah, that's a very tired marathon test. And uh, maybe afterwards I'll have gathered some more thoughts when I've had something to eat and I'll do a little wrap back in the office. So it's the morning after the marathon test and I thought I'd quickly sum up my thoughts on the Socony Endorphin Elite as a marathon race shoe. So when it came to comfort, I had no problems with the overall kind of foothold and the uppers and all of that. Over those 26 miles, I was in the shoes for, I think it was about three hours, 15, maybe a bit longer. No problems in terms of foothold with any rubbing, with any friction. These had a nice disappearing feel on the foot and it kind of stayed that way pretty much in terms of the whole throughout the marathon test. So far, so good. But what about the all important ride? Now, when it comes to a marathon shoe, there are three things that I really look for most. The first is kind of like a disappearing feel on the foot. I wanna know that the ride and the uppers and all of that, the shoe kind of doesn't interrupt the way that I want to run. It's almost like you can put it on and you just forget that it's there. Obviously you want it to be providing energy return, which is my second thing. I look for a shoe that's gonna give me something a little bit extra when my legs get fatigued and tired. In terms of overall energy and efficiency, if you can have a shoe that's kind of helping you along deep into those kind of last six miles of a marathon, that is a very, very happy thing indeed. And the final thing for me is something that's gonna offer a little bit of protection from the impact of the road and fight off that foot fatigue deep into those miles. Now in that marathon test, I think the Socony Endorphin Elite did well across all of those kind of three main factors that I look for in a marathon ratio. But what we really need to know is how do these stack up against the other carbon plated ratios that you might be picking to go and run a marathon in? Now they're not as punchy as the Alpha Fly or the Adidas Adios Prime X Strung. And I would definitely still be choosing those two shoes ahead of the Elite to go out and chase a marathon PB at any point. Not least because of the Elite's big kind of price tag, which is it's more expensive in the UK at least than both of those shoes. Now, if you put them up against the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent, kind of the original super shoe, they're not as light, not as agile, not as nimble, and not as direct as those shoes. So if you like something that gives you a bit more kind of ground contact, a little bit of a lighter weight, kind of racier feel, 
for your marathons, then the Vaporfly I think still offers that more than these shoes. You know, a lot of people still wear the Vaporfly for marathons if you look at the race start line. And I don't think these are gonna replace that feel that you get from the Vaporfly. They're a very, very different shoe. However, then you put them up against something like the Adidas Adios Pro 3, and there's a whole lot more stability in the Elite than those shoes, and they just feel a lot more comfortable on the foot. They're not as punchy. I don't think they give quite the response, but when you're running in the Adios Pro 3, you have to kind of, I feel like you have to dial in your form and you have to kind of find the sweet spot to run in. These are much more forgiving. You can, you can, you've got a bit more kind of range of how you land and how kind of nailed on your form is. So for that reason, I think I'd pick them probably over the Adios Pro 3 for a marathon. Now, if I was gonna pick one shoe that I think these perhaps come a little bit closer to in terms of the overall kind of feel and ride and the whole package, they're a bit more like the Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus, that kind of shoe to me, where you know, they are a bit kind of forgiving. There is a bit more stability. There is punch, but it's maybe not as pronounced as something like the Alpha Fly or the Strung or the Adios Pro 3, but they are a good solid marathon shoe. You know, I'd happily race marathons in the Saucony and Dolphin Elite. I think they are a good marathon race shoe. I think a lot of people will enjoy running in these. I think you can certainly go fast in these. They're not my number one race shoe. I think partly because of the huge price tag. I wish Saucony had not kind of 50 pounds off the price, at least in the UK. If they're a bit cheaper, I think they'd be much easier to recommend up against some of those other shoes that I've just mentioned. But I think just for price and the fact they're not quite sort of topping things like the Alpha Fly and the Primex Strung. They're not my number one race shoe, but I think they are a really good solid race shoe. So there you have it. That's been my marathon test of the Saucony Endorphin Elite. I hope you've enjoyed it. Feel free to hit me up in the comments below if you have any questions about how the marathon test went. Have, it, have you run in them yet? Have you had them on your feet? What do you think about them? Don't forget to check out all the other content we've got about the Saucony Endorphin Elite on the channel. There's loads of head-to-heads -head with all the shoes that we've just mentioned, the super shoes. I'll pop up some of these in a second so you can click straight through. Don't forget to like and subscribe, ring the bell so you hear about new videos when they're coming on the channel. Uh, as ever, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you again soon on the Run Testers.